Hey viewers, Eric O here. Got ourselves a 2003 Subaru Outback wagon. Uh, check engine lights on. So let's have a look. Well, there's our code. It's a P0483. It says here on the uh, Snap-on Veris that it's a fan rationality check is how they have it defined. Um, if you look elsewhere, uh, it'll come up just stating that it's a uh, cooling fan function problem. So let's go ahead and have a look at the cooling fans here and see what we can figure out. Gone ahead and printed this out a wiring diagram here to have a look at. Got a few relays, a few fuses to go ahead and have a look at. Obviously, have a look at the motors themselves, see if they're seized up. Kind of start with some of the basics before we get uh, too involved here and see what's going on. According to our wiring diagram, these two fuses here in the fuse box control the high amperage side of the relay. So let's check those. They're supposed to be hot at all times. Well, we can see here that the fuses are good. We can see here that the fan on the right side is obviously plugged in. We see the uh, connector right down here at the bottom of the right side of the shroud. So you're going to want to make sure that's plugged in, make sure somebody didn't accidentally leave it unplugged doing a timing belt or something. We can see that the fan is, uh, spins quite easily. It doesn't appear to be seized up or have any noise like it's hitting the shroud. We can come over here to the left side fan and verify the same thing. Verify that the fan spins freely, that it's not seized up, and also make sure that it's plugged in. The next thing we can do is identify our two relays and just have a quick look at those. We've got our main fan relay and our sub fan relay. So let's go ahead and yank those out of the box and I'll show you how to bypass those quickly to see if your fans work. Okay, so it's these two relays here. Our main relay and our sub fan relay. Those relays are exactly the same. So what we're going to do, the way you can test this without any special tools, is just have a uh, a fused jumper wire. So this has a 20 amp fuse just like what the fans run on. And we're going to jumper these two pins here. These are the, uh, if these are the factory relays, and they're the two copper colored uh, terminals there. So it's going to be the same on both relays, that terminal and that terminal. We're just going to jump those in our box and theoretically our fan should, should work. And again, we don't have to have the key on or anything because we remember the first two fuses we checked have a full time power and that's what we're jumping. So. There's our sub fan. And there's our main fan. So they work. So the only part of the circuit we have to check next is the uh, low side of the relay and I'll show you how to do that. One tool we like to use here in the shop is these relay jumpers. What this does, this allows you to plug in the relay and then plug this into the box and we'll be able to check for power on the low and the high side of the relay. So we can do that real quick uh, just to show you how that tool works. Um, I believe it's Lyle that makes these tools pretty much available anywhere. I'll put a link down in the description. But basically once we put that on there, that gives us all five of our pins on our relay so we can just check it with a check it with just an ordinary test light. We'll stick the relay to ground and we can uh, come up here on the other side of the box. Get switched around there. Swap that around. We'll put our other relay back in there so we can test them both. And uh, theoretically if we ground the low amperage side of this one it should kick on also. So that proves that our relay is good. So that's one way to test a relay. If you don't have any means of actually testing one independently from a vehicle, uh, you can go on YouTube. There's probably a lot of great videos on there that explain how a relay works and how to test it. Uh, if I had a little more time with this video, I'd, I'd go through and share that, or maybe that's uh, something we can do in the in the future here. But I believe I did see a lot of a lot of great videos on there on how to check out relays. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this system has uh, two relays. And it also has four fuses that are associated with it. The two fuses here that run the high amperage side of the relay, we've already gone through and tested. You can see here on the wiring diagram that there's two other relays that run the low amperage side of the relay, uh, which in which case we don't have to test now because we just jumpered the relays. Um, if either one of those fuses were blown, uh, jumping our relay, how we did there with that tool from Lyle, our relay jumper, it would not have worked. So there's no sense in going inside and uh, checking those. 
Now there's one last test that we're gonna do on this car, and perhaps it should have been the first one that we started with. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the process of diagnosing this uh, cooling fan system problem. It appears now that the cooling fans work. It pretty much leaves us with one, one other option is, is the fact that the computer could you know, be malfunctioning and not controlling the fans. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside and uh, under the dash on, on this Subaru, most Subarus, you're gonna see two green connectors hanging under the dash, under the driver's side footwell. Uh, just a single wire, male and female half. Now when we hook those together and turn the key on, what that's gonna do, that's gonna activate all the different relays and solenoids on the car. So theoretically, when we plug those in, we should hear, we should hear the cooling fans running, uh, the fuel pump's gonna be kicking on, the AC compressor, uh, the EVAP solenoids. There's gonna be a multitude of things that are, that are clicking and kicking on. Uh, but what we're looking for here in this case is uh, we're going to be looking for the cooling fans to turn on. Um, we very easily could have just started there, plugged those halves in, turned the key on, see if everything worked, and then, and then moved on. But uh, it was pretty simple, as you can see, just, uh, you know, just check the fuse, check the relay, see if the fans are plugged in, see if there's anything obviously wrong, see if the fans are moving. So if we plug these in, assume the cooling fan works, or we're just going to take it the next step further, we're going to start it up, turn the AC on. Uh, make sure the fans kick on with the AC. Then we're just gonna let the car warm up all the way. Make sure the fans turn on when the car is completely heated up. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, I'm gonna assume that uh, whatever is causing a problem isn't uh, here, you know, here now or, or, or currently at this point. So we'll just clear the codes um, and take a car for a test drive. And then at that point, we'll have to give it back to the customer uh, with you know, no problem found. So let's go into the dash and I'll show you where these connectors are. Okay, here we are under the dash. Like I said, there's there's the gas pedal to give you some kind of a reference. But if you look right up, um, we'll get this light so we can see what the heck we're doing. You'll see these two green green connectors, like I say, a male and a female half. So what we're going to do is just shut the key off. We're going to plug those together, and then we're going to turn the key back on. Okay, we got those two halves mated. You'll notice when you turn the key on, you're going to get a flashing check engine light and you're gonna hear a lot of stuff clicking. <laughs> so let's go under the hood and have a look. Well, it's pretty obvious that both cooling fans are functioning. We can hear all the relays clicking in the relay box. Um, this would indicate to me that the wiring from the computer to the relay is good. The computer has the ability to control the fans. So let's go ahead and shut the key off unplug those connectors we're going to clear the codes and start the car up okay i went ahead and cleared the codes started the car up the engine light is out now let's go ahead and just turn the ac on here Got the ac buttons on i heard a compressor kick on so let's go under the hood theoretically with the ac compressor running our fan should also be running See that's true. You see that both fans are running. So I'm going to shut those off, let the vehicle warm up, and make sure they kick on at temperature. Okay, so we got the car idling in the background there. We're going to come on here on our Varus, see if we can't pull up some scan tool data to see how warm this car is. I would expect the fans, let's see, here we're at 1, 143 according to this, 143 degrees. We're gonna let it sit there and idle and warm up. Uh, I don't have any theory in operation on this, at least on our repair information as to when the fan should kick on. I, I'm gonna suspect in the in the low 200s, 210, 220, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we'll let it warm up, see what we have. Um, we can look at our, our third group of data here on this scan tool, and we can see our uh, commanded state of the relays. Um, let this load up here. So we've got a radiator fan relay right here, so that it's off. Radiator fan relay number two is off. Unfortunately, on this screen, it does not combine the uh, temperature data also, so uh, we're more concerned with looking at that temperature data at this point. So we're gonna go back here, let it warm up, keep an eye on the temperature, um, and uh, see if the uh, fan kicks on there. All right, you can see here our temperature's creeping up on the 200 mark. Again, like I say, I'm not exactly sure when it should kick on. I'm assuming the low 200s, uh, mo most vehicles do. Highest I've ever seen them kick on is 220. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll sit here and monitor this. What I expect to see 
hits the desired temperature, the fan should kick on and then the temperature should immediately uh, drop back down uh, you know, to the thermostat temperature, which on this car is you know, probably 180, I think these are 180, 185. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the fans just kicked on, so it looks like they kick on at 203. when look both fans are are running so we should see this temperature start quickly uh should start dropping here pretty quickly and i expect it to get down to uh again like i say thermostat range uh, so we'll go ahead and watch this cool temp yeah you can see it's falling uh pr pretty rapidly there now yeah, they kicked right back off at 194 so uh which uh i, gu I guess is to be expected uh, so we can sit here let them cycle a couple times uh, yeah you can see it drop down to 190 so yeah, yeah, like I thought, pretty close to thermostat uh, range, 188, 186. So that's about right. Um, so I guess with that being said, um, there's really not much more that we can do here. Uh, you know, we, we've looked at the car. Uh, we've seen that the engine light was on, so it was a complaint it came in here with. And we see that there's obviously nothing wrong at this point with the cooling fans. Um, as to what caused the problem originally, I, I honestly I don't know. Uh, you know, everything's just kind of speculating whether they, uh, you know, got, you know, who knows? I mean, we've had snow here recently. They could have gotten it stuck, uh, you know, in a snowbank and had stuff jammed up in the fans. I don't know. I would suspect if that was the case, it would have blown a fuse. Um, somebody could have been, you know, working on the front or fiddling, had the fans unplugged with the key on. Uh, it's really, uh, really difficult to say. Uh, so I guess what I would do with that at this point, we've already cleared the codes. I'm gonna take it for a test drive. Uh, I've already gone through and wiggled some of the harnesses and, and stuff associated with the fans. So, you know, sometimes you'll run across problems like this where they're just not an answer. Uh, the fact of the matter is they work. The computer controls them. Um, you know, it tells them when to turn on and off. That, that function of it works. The relays are good, the fuses are good. Uh, we put it through a self-test, that's good. Uh, I mean, I guess in theory you could you could cut all this process pretty short and just plug in your two green connectors. If the fans kick on, great, clear the codes, let it warm up. If fans kick on when it's heated up, uh, you know, be done with it and ship it. But uh, I just want to take a little extra time, a little bit longer, to show you, you know, where some stuff is located, kind of some of the uh, some of the procedure associated with, you know, checking out a particular code. So uh, I guess that's it. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you. Uh, fix your Subaru or at least know where to look. You know, you may look and find a blown fuse, a bad relay, a uh, cooling fan motor seized up, a broken wire. N numerous things can set this code, but on this car, really no problems right now. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I just ask that you subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. And uh, just leave us uh, some notes in the comment box. Let us know what you like. So, have a great day.